Hello YouTube world, it's me again. How are you guys and girls doing today? Hopefully very well and thank you for all the subscriptions and comments and new subscribers. Uh, good to see you, welcome aboard today and mind the doors. Okay, moving on, I'm going to show you a loco today that's very very old and the reason I'm doing this video about this loco is to highlight its vintage and secondly to highlight some ideas and plans I've got for this loco to bring it up to scratch and bring it up to speed and spec with today's modern fleet out there. So the loco in question is one of these. It's a mainline brand Jubilee. It's a cracking model to look at and I'll take it out of the box in a minute and to show you and when I do you will probably agree with me that for a model of this age at the time um, was a, quite a nice model. Unfortunately these locos or mainline brand locos they've got a number of issues with them. Number one is the, the motor that comes in these Jubilees. They are absolutely cack. They are rubbish. Um, they're not uh, designed very well. And I've seen a few videos on YouTube of these running, but they're not, they're not ideal. And the haulage power of these things, um, they don't care how much you service them or clean them, they're not fantastic. Um, purely because of the mechanism and the motor, which I'll go into in a minute. But my plans for this model um, is to actually upgrade it and that's why I'm doing the video about this to give you a little bit of an update on what I'm going to do with the model for the future and hopefully we can get it running a little bit better so I'll show you what the model looks like in a minute and I'll also show you what I've done so the actual box that you see is the original box it came in when I, when I bought it at Sawbridgeworth Models um, in 1994 and the box is a little bit tatty over the years as you can see but it's, it's still holding together as best as it can um, it's a Chinese Hong Kong made model, so it's an overseas model, it's not British made unfortunately. Um, Mainline, just a little bit of brief history about Mainline as a company. You, you may or not, may not know that Mainline was the predecessor to Airfix. And Airfix model railways, when they went out of business, Mainline took over and took on their line of production. And then it eventually went over to Daypol, I believe. Um, there was a bunch of companies, there was uh, GMR, Daypol... Airfix mainline, they all sort of got thrown into the mix, and now the modern day counterpart is Daypol. So, anyway, Daypol makes some fantastic locos in both uh, body molding as well as performance, as well. So, hats off to them for doing so well as a company. And I've got quite a few Daypol little odds and ends in the layout, but anyway, moving on to the loco, let's get out the box and you can have a little look. Now, as you can see. She's actually quite nice. She's a lovely model. And I'll just bring this out of the box first of all. And I'll tell you the story behind this. It's quite a unique story. Let me just get it out of the box. Put it on my little workbench here. And you can have a proper look at this loco. Right. Now on the floor. I'm just going to stop this a minute and bring the camera off the little mini tripod I'm using so we can have a proper look and discuss more so stay tuned okay so here we are on uh, free roam mode so we can look around this loco and as you can see it's a nice model you've got lots of rivet detail there on the boiler and a lot of these separate items that are fitted like the handrails and bits and pieces on the side there as you can see these are nice models. This one's particularly, this is Neptune, which is 5687, which is the Roman number. And as you can see, there are quite a lot of nice details that stand out in the model. I mean, being for a sort of 30, or 30 plus year old model, um, these were quite nice compared to the models running at the time from Hornby. And when you think about it, sort of 1979, 1980, um, a lot of the locos available from Hornby weren't super detailed or had separately fitted items on there a great deal so in terms of detail for its age it was quite a nice model the only thing that let these models down um, was a number of things mechanically and operationally but as you see the, the loco is quite nice it's got separately fitted safety valves and whistle on the top there and it is generally a nice model the tender is quite nice it's got look at that look at the rivets on that and that's again that's impressive for a model of its age. Very impressive. Separately fitted handrails. 
nice detail on the top. The coal, I'd be tempted to put real coal on there, but then again I wouldn't because it looks nicely detailed and filled on there, just right to the top of the tender. You don't want it overspilled, and that looks quite nice from a static point of view. Underneath there, it's in good condition as well. Now, there's a story behind this model. I've got an identical, exact same one of these that I had in '94. Only what happened was um, the tender got dropped, which was my fault from the shelf, and it broke off. This got broken off. The rear tender step on the previous model I had, it got completely broken off. Um, there was some damage there to that and I lost both of the safety valves on the previous model and the whistle got lost as well, it's, it's broke off somewhere and then um, about two or three years ago I tried an experiment with a Soothe Smoke unit so I actually got a craft knife and cut off this chimney and put the Soothe Smoke unit and chimney in its place just to see what would happen obviously a miserable failure and the model was ruined so with a few problems it had, I thought, you know what, I'd love to actually replace it and, and get it as it was when I bought it in 94, I mean condition. So this actual model you're looking at now, I got off eBay a couple of weeks ago, about two and a half weeks ago, for £23, which was very reasonable. And it's an exact re replacement of the original Neptune that I had since 94. But the box um, that you saw earlier, that's the original box that the first one came in. The other one I've got in a piece of bubble wrap wrapped up and stored for spare parts and bits of piece I need off it mechanically so that's a spares and repairs donor loco and this one I intend to have as my operational one. Now then there's a couple of things wrong with these locos and they're infamous for having these problems. I won't take it to pieces but I'll just show you mechanically what's wrong and the major Achilles heel of these locos. You can't see it obviously from here I'm not, I'm not going to take this this plate underneath the underplate with these two screws you can see in the in the camera shot here I'm not going to take these off but if you take it, take these off and the body screw at the cab end and the body screw at the pony truck end you take the whole assembly off underneath and it reveals the axles the axles are actually in two separate um, fittings they're split and due to the age of the plastic they get a bit brittle and what happens is they snap and then what happens is the wheels independently turn on their own of each other so this wheel will actually start to trying to turn that way and this wheel for example on the other side of their axle will go that way you get a split axle uh, problem that basically throws out all the running gear and also the quartering uh, the quartering for those of you who are not sure what quartering means quartering is when the wheels are set exactly at a certain position so the linkage and the rods all connect together nicely in a, in a straight line so that when the wheels turn in a revolution um, all the drive rods they go around at the same time and they work with everything else in the loco and that's how you get the nice running but if the quartering goes out it creates problems the, the wheels will lock up and it will damage the running gear and create all sorts of problems and it's just pointless now what I've done with this with this particular model I should have videoed it the other day, but I forgot to. But what I, I've actually done, um, and if you use that, you know, those of you out there that want to know further, um, there's a guy on YouTube called, um, oh, what's his name now? Sam's Trains. Go to Sam's Trains channel, and he does, does, a, does some quite good videos, and he's done a good review on some main, on mainline repairs and stuff like that for mainline locos. Um, he basically um, discussed this problem. What you can do you could an arrow die or super glue uh, these axles i.e. the wheels you just basically very gently prise out don't take them off otherwise you'll lose the quarter and do one side at a time so you ease this one off basically don't take it all the way off just ease it off with a screwdriver and then put a gentle dab of super glue on the, on the axle bearing and push the thing back together and then that will keep that wheel locked in place uh, indefinite and then you just do one wheel at a time that one and that one once they're in place go across ease that one off a little bit dab a glue there push it back push that one open dab a glue there push it back 
open that one up, double glue there, push it back and so forth. So you do all six wheels. The idea is you keep the quarter in locked in place and you fix the split axle problem. It doesn't always work depending on how brittle the axle plastic is. If the actual if the axle plastic is actually brittle enough and it's broken completely, then you may have to think about um, replacing the wheels with either the replacements uh, for these, which obviously you can get all the spares on, on eBay, i.e. another one of these locos. Or if you really want to go to town and spend out the money, you can get a Backman uh, complete uh, drive chassis to replace it. It's a bit of a pain in the bum. That's why most modelers tend to avoid these locos. But putting it up right side, like I said, I bought this purely to replace the one that I damaged. And also as a little side project for me to do, because I want to get this running nicely. So the first thing I've addressed on this loco, as mentioned, I've, I've super glued all the axles on both sides, the three main running drive wheels. Each side has got a blob of super glue on the axle, pushed back together, correctly quartered, so it actually runs uh, nice and tight in terms of the axles don't fall off or do an independent move. The other thing I've done as well on this loco is I've lubricated the gear, the, the, the engagement gear. Again, I'm not going to take this apart, but on this wheel here, there's a large gear that connects with the motor gear inside the loco. And if, if the gear is damaged over the period of time, the wheel actually will slip within, with inside the gear and it won't actually engage properly and you get some problems. So again, I took the old gear wheel off my previous Neptune and I replaced that and put that in place. So this drive wheel is off the other Neptune. That got fixed, so at least it's more, it's, it's tighter. Before when I used to do this, literally with finger pressure, the wheels used to rotate. Now, as you can see, they're quite tight and locked in place, which is what they should be. They should be engaged nice and tight with the drive wheel and the gear mechanism of the motor. Uh, what else did I do in this model? Uh, let me see. Oh yeah, I did a cleaning service on the motor. So I took the armature out, the brushes and the springs, gave those a good clean with some lighter fluid, put them back and tested it all, and it's much better. However, when you see this running in a minute, you'll see what I mean about terms of um, performance. They aren't very good. So the main topic of this discussion or this video today is I'm going to, sh I'm going to show you and give you a pre briefing about what I'm going to do to improve the running and I'm going to show you the running in a minute on the layout how it is on its own and you can see for yourself that why these are so given a wide berth if you like on eBay and on collectors fairs because they look stunning they look really nice models when you look at this from a, a distance if you're going past on a, on a a model railway show somewhere and you saw this on the this place and for like 20 quid you think my goodness that's a steal I'm having that one it's only when you get it home and you start running that you think, oh my goodness, what have I got myself into? Um, they're very noisy, but that isn't the problem, it's their performance. The motor, as I mentioned inside, isn't very good. It's not very powerful, it doesn't really do the job what it's designed for. Um, running light engine, they're not, they're, they're not bad. Um, but you put a rake of, say, four or more coaches behind it, you have to really sort of wind it up on the controller to get it going and also it runs two overscale speed. So what we're gonna do in layman's terms is just re-motor this loco. If you remember, um, or if you haven't seen so far, I recommend that you check out my channel and zip back a few videos to, there's a video I did on a, on a Hornby, not Hornby, sorry, um, an Airfix uh, 4F that came with the Hornby colliery set and it had the old Airfix style motor in the tender and what I'd done was basically reconverted the loco to loco drive. What I'm going to do with this loco, it's not going to be loco drive because of the, the, the design of the in, internal mechanism here. It would be very difficult to convert this to a, a motor in the tender, I'm sorry, motor in the loco job um, without taking the complete chassis off and replacing it, for example, with a Batman drive. But the cheaper option that we're going to do is we're going to motorize the tender because the tender is just a, a dummy, it's just nothing in it, it's just wheels. Um, and now when I bought this loco, as you can see, the wheels are immaculate and the whole loco is in very, very good condition. So all we're going to do really is just we're going to take the base of this off. We're going to keep the tender body. 
And what we're going to do, we're going to replace the tender chassis with a motorised Hornby Black 5 um, motorised tender chassis. Because the Hornby, Black, Hornby Stania Black 5 tender drive model has pretty much near enough the same tender chassis on there. So we don't have to touch anything on there. All we need to do is basically have the tender body from this loco on top of the Black 5 tender driven loco chassis. And in theory, we should be good to go. And we just figure out a connection way from the tender to the loco and wire up the two independent live sides inside the loco mechanism. And we should be good to go. It shouldn't be a problem. Just a case of running a pair of wires through here, up underneath, and directly to the motor. Or the, not the motor, sorry, the loco's live sides. Because there's, inside this loco, again, it's my fault I'm being lazy today, but I'm not going to show you because I'm just too lazy, I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you take the body off of these things, again, go to Sam's Trains and look at his video, because he does a much better job than I do, personally. Um, when you take the body off of these, there's a strip of insulative card that goes all the way along the motor chassis to about there. And what it does, this particular model relies on a live chassis, i.e. pick up through the chassis and through the wheels. And what we can, what you can do basically is take the motor out quite easily and simply, remove the motor and the gear so it's just freewheeling, and then solder a pair of wires one each side of the live chassis that's separated by the bit of card. And in theory, those wires will then run to the motor inside the tender, and you can figure out a way of keeping that connection together so it pulls the tender, or rather, the tender pushes the loco, and we should have something running a little bit better. But anyway, what I'll do, until that all happens, I'll give you an update as we progress with the model. But in the meantime, it's still a nice model. And I'm going to put her on the layout now and do some running with it. And you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? So I just wanted to show you that model today. And uh, something else non-railway related I'm going to show you, which I picked up. Because I like going down the pound shop lately. I think I think this is it's quite a good resourceful place in terms of model railway equipment and stuff if you know what to look for and I got this for a pound the other day look at this it's an, it's meant to be for an iPhone but I found out you can take this bit off it unscrews and it leaves you with when you unscrew that thread in there and you take that little plastic bit off the top where you've got the threaded base there it's got a piece of rubber underneath and it fits my camcorder. So, in actual fact, you can use it as a little tripod for filming and bits and pieces. So I've, I've tried that out earlier, as you can see from the first shot, and it works quite well. And I'm thinking about using that on the layout, where I can just actually have the camera resting on that and do different shots for you guys at home. Anyway, a little bit of silliness there. So, that's the plan. But anyway, I'm going to get this running on the layout now. You can get some trains running, because I'm sure that's what you'd like to see today. And I'll give you an update as and when we start transforming this model to a tender drive loco so we can get a better running out of it because at the moment it's absolutely uh, not very good you'll see in a minute anyway so anyway until i see you again have a great day thanks for watching and stay tuned for the updates right well here she is on a track so i'm just going to give her a little a little bit you have to give her quite a lot of juice and you'll see why i'm going to shut up and just let you watch what happens
<clears throat> now at the moment on the controller I've got it about a medium speed so if we zip, just zoom down and have a look what I've got it on there you go it's on about 50 now if I just reduce this to say about 48 on the controller which is there you now look at the loco now struggling a little bit And you can see it's starting to struggle a little bit. It's got a mind of its own. Um, so I've given it a very good clean in terms of the motor. The wheels have been cleaned. All the com rods and running gear have been lubricated and oiled and cleaned, you name it. It's been given a tip-top service, but because of its age and the motor in it, um, it's just not 100%, as you can see in here. If I was to put coaches behind this, it, it would struggle. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in a minute, just to give you a comparison. Okay, so I'm just going to stop this and then we'll put some coaches behind it. Right, I've got the Jubilee with four Lima Mark 1's behind it. And uh, I'll let you see for yourself how it behaves. As if on cue. <laughs> there you are. And what you've got to do is either tear the juice up or just give it an assistance. No, it see it doesn't want to go. It just hasn't got this power where it needs to be put. And that's me just pushing it in my hand there. It sort of gets going, finds a little bit of momentum, starts running. But as you can see it's crawling around there. And now I've got it on about 61 on the controller. And now it's just stopped. As you can see over there. And if we look at my controller downstairs, and where are we? Right. That's on 61. If I turn it up to about 65, even 70, 80, you can hear it fires up. That's on 70, 75. There you are, it's on 75, look. That's just struggling. This is why we need to get rid of this horrible motor inside of it and put a tender drive system in there, I think. And I don't want this racing around my lane at breakneck speeds. I'm not one of those modelers. If that's your, your gig, then fair enough, but it's not mine. If I put it on full now, that's full on on my controller on track 2. And as you can see, that's full on, believe it or not. My track's clean, the wheels are clean, the motor's been cleaned. They've just got a mind of their own, they really have. It's purely because the motor's a naff. And it's the plastic gear system in it, it's not very good either. See now it's picked up. I don't want that silly speed going around on my layout, sorry, but that's, I hate it. I can smell the motor as well now.
as if on cue. There we go. Did even touch nothing. Look. Horrid, 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 horrid motor. Another little experiment we're going to do is we're going to use the simulator and brake controller which basically builds up inertia and then increases the speed of the train gradually and then shuts off the speed of the train gradually. So again we'll come downstairs, we'll set it up, so the first thing we need to do is switch on the brake simulator which is that one there. I've still got to get this side repaired by the way but it's functioning uh, with it working on at the moment as discussed in one of the previous videos so I'll get that sorted out another day anyway let's get this running so if I crank that up, crank that up to about say full and then I'll take the brakes off we'll see what happens Yeah, it's sliding up around there on the curves. Obviously, running it with the brake on slowed it down considerably to a little bit more. But that, look, there you go. See, look, it's now it's conked out. <laughs> I didn't even touch nothing. Look, look at that. It's completely conked out, and now it's trying to get going again. Look, that poor thing struggling. Look, it's just the motor inside. It's just struggling so much. Despite being cleaned and everything, it's just not good. It's just not designed for what it's supposed to do. I'm just going to stop this a second. Right, okay, welcome back. I just had to stop that a second and take the carriages off. Now we're going to run light engine with the brake switched on. So I'll show you exactly how it behaves. Take the brake all the way off. You've got full power on the controller. You can hear it. It's struggling to move, and there it goes, just takes off. And it's just stopped to get inside my tunnel. That's rubbish. You can't have a loco running like that, I'm sorry. Let me just stop it a second, put it in reverse, see what happens. Cool, there's a strong smell of carbon, which means the motor is definitely working hard. And that shouldn't be the case. There you go, it's not even it's not even moving. I'll take the brake off, switch it off on the controller. There we go, look see. Turn it down a little bit on the controller, put it in reverse as you can see. struggling well there we go so what I'm going to do is um, as mentioned I think I'm going to just take that mechanism out I'll take the motor out completely that loco and I'm going to put a tender drive system and I think that's the only remedy for that right welcome back to the last part of the video I'd stop that there just for a second um, before I say goodbye and thanks for watching and I hope you've been uh, at least interested in what I've been talking and proposing to do with that uh, mainline Jubilee um, I'll just demonstrate what I'd like to see my mainline Jubilee run like it probably won't but I'm going to use this as an example this is an old Hornby it's even it's an old Hornby model in terms of I think it's about five ten years old but it's a Hornby black five loco drive 
um, super detailed model and this is how I'd like to see my Jubilee run in terms of speed and performance. That's how I'd like to see a run like that, nice and smooth, no problems. So, before I shut the video off, I'm going to show you something else I meant to show you the other day. Uh, it's my new wall clock. Do you like it? It's an old steam pressure gauge design. Uh, it's a company called Zazzle. If you Google up Zazzle clocks on uh, Google, they do these clocks, not steam clocks. It's like a perspex perspex glass finish on the back on the front should I say um, as you can see and the design is actually printed on the outside but from a distance it looks like a the old brass pressure gauges so that obviously fits very well in here and it keeps very good time anyways that's enough of that and that's enough of that and I'll see you soon hopefully with an update and some more trains thanks very much for watching today and what I'd like from you today is this if you at home and I know many of you watching my channel have subscribed to this channel I know many of you have got some possibly in your collection some mainline locos yourself some mainline brand locos jubilees tank engines you name it you probably got it um, if you've experienced problems the same as what I've done or you've overcome a problem um, what I've got um, please do comment below on what you've done because I'd love to hear your solutions and ideas and uh, like I said check out Sam's Trains uh, channel uh, great guy some very interesting videos he's got up there as well a uh, bit more detailed on, on the mainline servicing um, guide I haven't done one of those and I don't really intend to but he does but anyway if you'd like to see me do a mainline service for a mainline Jubilee service should I say um, give me a comment and I'll, I'll try and get around to doing it I'm not frightened of doing it it's just that to be honest with you I'm thinking at the moment, what have I got myself into um, with this particular loco that's over on my workbench over here. Um, it's a bit of a conundrum to be honest with you guys and girls. I like the loco very much and spin it around the other way. Like I said, I do like this loco. Oh, that's a bit too much light on it maybe. Maybe. Um, I do like this loco, as I said, it's a nice looking loco. And if I can get this running half decent near enough towards the Hornby sort of model, then I'll be happy. So I think the only way forward that I'm thinking of doing this is to rip out the motor mechanism inside the engine there into the loco part, get that out completely, which is very, 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 very easy to do. It's only a tiny little motor. And when I do get around to doing it, I'll do a full video of me doing it so you can see how to do it for yourselves at home, should you want to do that for the future. Um, that's the only way forward I think is to take the motor mechanism, rip it out of this loco, take the gearing system out and just have it as a free running model and then put a tender drive mechanism uh, in this chassis and then use this tender top to put on the live tender that's got the motor in and put it back together and obviously have a pair of wires that's running from the tender through up into the, into the loco and connect up with the live chassis so that'll give it the uh, the pickups as you were so that's what I'm going to intend to do I've seen a complete built Hornby Black 5 chassis on eBay for about 20 quid I'm currently bidding on one at the moment um, for a couple of quid so either way uh, you probably will see this model running a little bit better hopefully in the future and even though it's a little bit of a letdown and a bit of a white elephant to be honest with you I do feel a lot of love for this particular loco and I don't know why the other night I sat really late at night at 2 o'clock in the morning I couldn't sleep so I come next door and pondered with the layout as I do and I um, got the paints out <laughs> and I painted the cab inside there a little bit of detail in there that's how much I love my trains no matter how worn they are and not well they are I give them a little bit of TLC little bit of a detail there I painted anyway that's that and uh, I'm sure at some stage you'll see this loco run again in tip top condition okay anyway hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon take care and happy modeling bye bye